This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, everyone. Afrel Chenar of Tubishvat. Today we're going to speak about the Indian of what exactly is Tubishvat. The, the Mishnah tells us in the beginning of Masech Rosh Hashanah that Beishamay's opinion is that the new year for fruits is Rosh Chodesh Shvat. Beishol says it's Tu B'Shvat. Now there's a widespread misconception that it's Rosh Hashanah Le'ilanus. It's a day of judgment for fruits. It's not a day of judgment for fruits. That's a mistake. It's an error. Reb Yitzchak Yosef quotes Reb Chaim Noah, and there are some that's, that say this, but it's a pretty explicit mistake. It's a confusion between the first Mishnah Rosh Hashanah and the second Mishnah Rosh Hashanah. The first Mishnah Rosh Hashanah says there are four lines of demarcation in the year. The second Mishnah Rosh Hashanah says there are four times a year the world is judged. Fruits are judged on Shavuos. Shavuos is, is the day of judgment for the fruits. Tu B'Shvat is the line of demarcation for Maiser. Whatever fruits were Nechnat, Herchanata, before Tu B'Shvat, the Maiser is last year. Whatever fruits have chanata after Tu B'Shvat, the Maiser is this coming year. By the way, today's gala breakfast is sponsored by my dear friend, Mr. Freud. And I will cover the Yom Tov of Tu B'Shvat. We're Mavarach Him and Hesom Mishpacha, Yishbizoycha, for Simcha, Sanach, Surah, Tovus, Shefa, Brach, Vatzlach, Arbi, Eskot, Tzedek. So, it is not a day of judgment. It is a line of demarcation for Hilchis Maser. And even so, it would not seem to be a festive day. It's a technical day. It's like tax season, basically. It's April 15th. I don't know anyone who celebrates tax season. I don't know anybody who rejoices on April 15th, unless they figure I got it out of the way. But there is no one who omits Tachnon. Some people fast, but nobody omits Tachnon. So why does the Shulchan Aruch say in Simon Kuf Lamed Aleph, that the minog is not to say Tachnan on Tu B'Shvat. It's not a Yom Tif, it's a Meiser day. It's just a line of demarcation. There is an inexplicable comment of the Gra. The, the deepest and most profound and cryptic comments that you will find are the Hagois Hagra and Shulchan Aruch, the Bir Hagra. The Bir Hagra says, the reason we don't say Tachnan on Tu B'Shvat, he says it's a Rosh Hashanah Li'ilanois, just like all the other four Rosh Hashanahs are a Yom Tif. Now let's go through that. What are the four Rosh Hashanahs? One is Rosh Chodesh Tishrei. It's a Rosh Hashanah. Le... Bring me a Gemara Rosh Hashanah. The Be'echad B'Tishrei is for Shavias, is for... So the truth is, Echad B'Tishrei is not a Rosh Hashanah. It's not a day not to say Tachnon. The fact that it's a... The fact that it's a line of demarcation for other halachas, thank you, is not a reason not to say Tachnon. The reason we don't say Tachnon, it's Rosh Hashanah L'Shanim, U'L'Shmitin, U'L'Yoivlois, L'Natiya. The fact that it's a Rosh Hashanah L'Natiya is not the reason we don't say Tachnon. It's we don't say Tachnon because it's a Yom Tif. When else is a Yom Tif? Echod Be'elol, Rosh Hashanah L'Master Behema. Ah! The reason we don't say Tachnan on, on Rosh Chodesh Elul is not because it's Rosh Hashanah and Maaseh Behemah, it's because it's Rosh Chodesh. When else do we say Rosh Chodesh Nisan? It's Rosh Hashanah L'Melachim V'L'Regalim. That's not why we don't say Tachnan. And also, what, since when is there a Hekesh between all the four Rosh Hashanahs? But this is a very enigmatic, inexplicable comment of the Goyin, that just like the other Rosh Hashanahs, we don't say Tachnan, so too on Tu B'Shvat. So I want to share with you just a few thoughts. Firstly, in the Sefer Nefesh David. Nefesh David are, were the personal practices of the Adaras, Rabbi Eliyahu David Rabinowitz to Umim. Well, the great Goin, the Rav of Yishalayim, father-in-law of Rav Ram Yitzchak Cook. He writes on the 15th day of Shvat, he would learn Hilchois Maser in the Rambam. And he would review it, and he would be Mechadesh according to his ability. And he davened to Hashem, that he should have the schos of Mekayim, the mitzvah, b'poyo mamesh minat Torah. And he said to himself that the reason why the Rishonim were koiveya, tu b'shvat as a yom tif, not to say tachnon, is what? To remind us that there's a mitzvah of hafroshas maser. Like Chazal tell us, shisi libech lemesila 
Derech Halachta Asilachad Siyunim. Rashi says on that Pasuk that we should always make a Zechel Lamikdash. So basically, what is Tu Bishvat? Says the Aderas, it's a Zecher to the time that Hilchos Tatuis uh, Baaretz were applicable. And it's a reminder that one day the time will come where you won't just learn Mishnah Bro, but you'll learn Darach Hamuna, Rab Chaim Kenevsky. You'll have to learn all the Hilchos Zraim, Hilchos Shmita, Hilchos Yoivel, all the Mitzvahs, Hatsuyos Baaretz. That is what the, the Adara says is the reason for Tu Bishvad. It's a day to remind ourselves of Mitzvahs Hatsuyos Baaretz. Do you know Mitzvahs Hatsuyos Baaretz? Many people go to Eretz Yisrael. Are you allowed to eat the fruit? I don't know. Are you, what about Shemitah? I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. When are you supposed to learn about it? At the very least on Tu B'Shvat, it's a day dedicated to remind ourselves of the mitzvahs, Hatuyos Ba'aretz. That's, uh, I would say, um, a valiant attempt to explain why Tu is a Yom Tif, to say that's the reason we don't say Tachnon, because um, it's a reminder to learn Hilcha Yisraim. I mean, that's what that Dara says, so, Batla Datenu. But it's hard to say that that's the reason why it was established as a Yom Tif. So uh, the uh, Magen Avram brings from a Sefer Tikkun Yisachar, or Tikkun Yisachar. We don't know how to pronounce it because nobody has a Sefer. But he is the one who brings, he's the first record of the custom to eat a lot of fruits on, t- on Tu B'Shvat. He brings the Ashkenazim, Arnoyeg, Tvi Marbe, Beperois, Ilanois on Tu B'Shvat. Not the Sfardim, the Ashkenazim. Now, nowadays the Sfardim have more than taken over this custom. But if somebody wanted to know, let's say you don't eat fruits on Tu B'Shvat. What did you violate? Nothing. There's no mitzvah da'iraisa, there's no mitzvah da'abanon. It's brought in the Magen Avram that the Ashkenazim are noyeg to be marba b'mine peirais. Now here's the problem. Whatever fruits you're going to get, you're going to get an apple. You're gonna, now, the, here's the most important thing. The most important thing you could do on Tu B'Shvat is not eat worms. So it doesn't have to eat dates. Yeah, you know how to check? You've been trained to check dates? Yeah, there's a heksher. Okay, I'm going to tell you the chiddush of the century. Heksher means there's no pig in it. It doesn't mean there's no worms in it. It could say the vadarabanam of Queens, the vadarabanam of Flatbush, the vadarabanam of Five Towns. It doesn't mean but by eating it, you're not over hundreds of laven. They're not checking it for worms. They're just making sure that it's not chazer tray. So you need to be trained. Don't go near a date unless you know how to check it. Don't go near a fig unless you know how to check it. It might not be so hard, you could, you know, be trained, you could, you know, watch all the training videos that they send you, no problem. Before you go near the thing, make sure you know how to check. You want to eat a remind, remind them, don't need to be checked. Um, or strawberry, don't go near the strawberry unless you soak it in uh, soap water, you agitate it, and then you get off the bugs. Otherwise, stay away from fruits. If, unless you know how to make sure that they, they, they don't need to be checked. But, let's say an apple. Apple, you're okay. Even though, you know, traditionally apples always have the worms in it. Now, the worms have much better places to hang out these days than your apple. So you eat an apple. Here's the thing. Why in the world am I eating an apple? Because it's Tu B'Shvat. Why is it, what, what is Tu B'Shvat? It's the new year for Meiser. So why would I eat on the new year for Meiser last year's apple? I mean, it's the whole minhag of eating fruits is counterintuitive. This is the new year for fruits. So how am I celebrating? By eating last year's crop. I mean, that's the most counterintuitive. Well, it is 30 days before Purim, so you prepare for not for ben But Rabbi Leibel Eger asks, the minhag of eating fruits, if anything, is counterintuitive. It seems illogical. So Rabbi Leibel Eger, whose yard site is coming up on the 22nd day of Shvat, gives the following answer. Now, Rabbi Leibola Eger, we know is the grandson of Rabbi Kiva Eger, the son of the Gilyoin Marsha, Rabbi Shalom Eger, and he left regular, normative, Jewish practice, and he became Hasidish. Legend has it, Rabbi Shalom Eger sat shiva for Rabbi Leibola Eger. 
Rav Leibla Eger, on his yard site, he passed away on the 22nd day of Shvat. There was a snowstorm on that day. Not only was there a snowstorm, one of the biggest um, snowstorms in the history of the world. The account is that the snow was up to people's noses. Some say their waist. Yesh Emrim the waist. Say, so how many, you're in Warsaw, how many people are going to be able to get to such a, how many people are going to be able to get to such a, a Levaya? More than 20,000 people came to Levaya of Rabbi Leibola Eger. He was one of the greatest uh, Hasidish uh, Rebbes. He was a Goy Natsum. And, uh, but it was revolutionary from that family uh, for him to become, uh, he was a Talmud of Kotsk and then Ishbitz, and he was a fascinating personality. And at his uh, Levaya, he was zoichet to have 20,000 people. I was zoichet to be at his kever. And says Rabbi Leib Eger, something Ayyem Anayra. The Gemara tells us, Masech de Brachis, Amr Rabbi Chanina, look at number 16. Kal hanene min ha'oil mazeh b'loi bracha, ki ilu goizel laha kadosh baruch hu uknesas Yisrael. Anyone who is nene from this world without a blessing, it's as if he stole from HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the Jewish people. If you eat without a blessing, you stole. Who did you rob? You robbed God. You also robbed the Jewish people. Says Rashi, how did you rob God? You robbed the Rebbe Nisham, the Bracha. How did you rob the Jewish people? That when a person eats without a Bracha, the fruits are smitten. God smites the produce. So it says Rebbe Leibla Eger, if by not making a bracha, God smites the produce, by making a bracha, God blesses the produce. Therefore, the minog of eating fruits on Tu is that by making a blessing on last year's crop, you infuse blessing and you give a zuchus for the coming year's crop. Okay, that's what he says is the... Uh, idea of making a bracha on fruits on Tu because not making a bracha, it causes the fruits to be smitten. So making a bracha infuses bracha in the fruits. Marav Rabbi say not only does making a bracha infuse blessing in the fruits, take a look in the Torah. The Torah says that we know we, in Al HaMichya we say... God have mercy on your people. Have mercy on your Mizbeach. Build Jerusalem. Bring us up into it. We will rejoice in its building. So we can eat the fruits. Ask the Torah, we want Hashem to rebuild Yerushalayim to eat fruits? Doesn't the Gemara say, Moshe Rabbeinu didn't want to go into Eretz Yisrael just to eat fruits? He wanted to go to be Mekai in the midst of Satsulayis Ba'aretz. How could you ask God to rebuild Yerushalayim to eat fruits? You want God to rebuild Yerushalayim to eat an apple? That's the Kasha of the Torah. Therefore the Torah says, you're not allowed to say those words. It's Asr to say, V'noichal mi piria, V'nizba mi tuva. It's ridiculous. You're going to tell God, rebuild you shalim so I could eat an orange? And therefore the Torah says, don't say it. My father didn't, my father Rush didn't say it. Don't say it. If you're an Ashkenazi, you know how to say it. If you're a Sephardi, you could say it. But not if you're Ashkenazi. But we do say it. Says the Beis Yosef, what's the pshat that we say it? He says, Nira shetaymoy on the fourth line, v'nei shohi mefaresh, shema shano oimrim v'noichal mi piriyah, v'nizva mi tuva, 
We don't want to eat fruits to eat fruits. The tachlis is not to eat the fruit. The tachlis is rebuild Yerushalayim. We'll go up into it. We'll eat the fruits and we'll make a blessing. But we can't, the, the tachlis is to make a blessing, but you can't make a blessing if you don't have an orange. So we ask God, rebuild Jerusalem, and we'll eat the fruits, and we'll make a bracha. What's so great about making a bracha? That's why we want to build, rebuild Jerusalem to make a bracha. <clears throat> that reads writes in Parshas Ekev, that a person has to be very careful in Berchas Hanehenen. A person has to be careful in all blessings, but especially Berchas Hanehenen, because the person's body is nene from the food, and the person's body is nene from the bracha, umiskadesh bebracha yiselu. A person is sanctified through his blessings over food. Like it says, v'soyroscha v'soych me'ai. When you make a bracha and you eat food, you ingest the bracha. When you make a bracha on tefillin, the bracha doesn't go into your intestines. When you make a bracha on a bagel, you eat the bracha. You eat the bracha. And if you say a bracha, you're eating, you're eating dirt. You're eating, ba- you're eating something bad. A bracha is an entity. So if you say, what did you say? Well, you, you were signing the telephone book? What, what, what is that? Oh, who, who are you whispering to? What was that mystical incantation? How were you able to say that bracha in less than a millisecond? So when you make a bad bracha and on a bagel, and then you eat the bagel, then you should view it like you went into a pile of mud, and you took a spoon and you consumed putrid mud. But when you make a bracha and you think about the meaning of Hashem's name, Hashem's name is Hashem Havaya, Hashem is Hoya Hoya you have to know you're ingesting Kedusha. More than your tefillin, more than your Torah, it has a great hashpa on you because you're eating it. Okay? That's how you have to feel. You're eating, you're eating the bracha. The Kafachayim brings from the Ari and the Sharuach HaKodesh. Iker, look at number 21, because you're not going to believe me. Iker hasogas ha'odam aruach HaKodesh tluya idei kavonas ha'odam uzehirus b'chol pirchas hanenin. Your main kedusha is from blessings on food. Not from learning, not from davening, not from doing mitzvahs. The way you make a bracha on food. Why? Because food has tumma on it. And you've got to remove the tumma. How do you remove the tumma? By making brachas. The Arizal warned me very much. So everyone has to remember that when, you come to, when it comes time to eating a suda, what's the first thing you do even before you before you make a bracha, who remembers? You do tshuva, Rav Nissen says. Every meal, before you sit down, you always do tshuva. Every meal you do tshuva. What, about, what do you say? You say, chatasi avisi pasha. You don't even have to say, it could be mahar tshuva. What do you say on Shabbos? Umal Hashem alikach Every meal you do tshuva. After you do tshuva, you have to realize, you have a beautiful meal in front of me. But I have a choice. I can consume something that's going to bring me down, or I could consume something that's going to bring me up. What is it dependent on? How I make a bracha. Now, so the Beis Yosef learns, we're asking Hashem, we build Yushalayim, we'll eat the fruits, and we'll make a bracha. But the question is, what's it got to do with rebuilding Yushalayim? Why can't I eat good food in Cedarhurst and make a bracha? I can, I can make brachas in Cedarhurst. What, what, the Beis Yosef is saying, you know, really you could say, V'noicham peria v'nizbam mituvah. Why? Because the focus is on Unavarechacha Aleha Bikadusho Vitahara. Okay, but what do I need the fruits of Eretz Yisrael for? 
What do I need to be in Eretz Yisrael to eat those fruits and to make the bracha? By the way, it's well known the Ben Eshchai would try to get a hold of fruits from Eretz Yisrael on Tu B'Shvat. Again, you're going to have to get through customs. They're going to ask you, you know, do you have any fruits from, you bring any fruits with you? You say, yes. <laughs> you'll, you'll be there for the next four, four months, you know. While all the illegal aliens are coming in with all kinds of, you know, cre- the imports and uh, you're going to be there with your apple from Israel, you know, and the, the inspector is going to be looking at it. So I, I can't tell you how exactly to do it, but according to what we're learning, if it's dependent on the bracha, what's so special about the fruits of Eretz Yisrael? So there's a Bach. The Bach is an astounding comment, uh, an amazing Bach. The Bach says, look at number 22, Tema. Kedushas Eretz Hanishbaba mi Kedushas Eretz Ha'al Yoyna. The holiness of the land of Israel, which is influenced from the Eretz Yisrael Lamala, who Nishbas Gambe Paraseha, is affected through its fruits. Sheyoinkim mi Kedushas Hashchina, Hashaychenes Bekerva Eretz. The Shechina today is in the land of Israel, and therefore it's in the fruits. That's why we were warned in Parshas Masay, don't contaminate the land that you're living in, that I am shoychein b'soycha, ki ani Hashem shoychein b'toych b'nei Yisrael. And it says, if you're metame the aretz, the tumah will go in the fruits. And the, the shechina has left the land. If we sin. The Bach says a, a, a wondrous idea. The Bach says that Eretz Yisrael Lamata is Mechuvan Kineged Eretz Yisrael Lamala. And therefore there's a certain sanctity in the land and the sanctity of the land is infused in the fruits. And if we're able to retain the Shechina in Eretz Yisrael, that Shechina will be present in the fruit. So not only does the bracha infuse Kedusha in the fruit, the fruit itself is considered something that is affected and influenced by the Kedusha of the Shechina. That applies to Shiva Saminim and not Shiva Saminim. By the way, there's an amazing Chesed Li Avram. Chesed Li Avram says, a big kasha. Chesed Li Avram is who? Who remembers? The great, great grandfather of the Chida. He says, I don't understand. We're in the we're in the midbar. What did we eat? Parshas B'shalach. What did God give us? Mun. We get to Israel. No, we can't have mun anymore. Well, we can only have mun in a in a desolate desert. Why didn't God? If we had mun, the makom saraf, nachash, and akrav, and a makom tuma, then kavachoyma, we should have mun in Eretz Yisrael. No, we get to Israel. The mun stopped. Says the Chesed Avram, It was a Chesed. The mun stopped. In the Midbar, which is an Eretz Temeya, and it, there, it's the domain of the Shadim. So if anything, any fruit would grow in the Midbar, it would contain Tuma in it. So then it would contaminate us. However, in the land of Israel, where the fruits themselves have Kedusha, and the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael is infused in the fruits, we're it's actually a favor that Hashem does to us that He doesn't give us the man in Eretz Yisrael. We have something holier than the man. We have Peros Eretz Yisrael. Is the so, bracha required on the man? Yes. That's a, good, that's a good shear, by the way. What bracha do they make on the man? What blessing do they make on the man? The, the, you know, some, some commenters say, Mosi Lechem and So it comes out that there's a special aliyah that a person could have from eating fruits in the right way. Number one, again the Torah says, don't say, but the Beis Yosef says, no, the focus is, we want to eat the fruits to be able to make a bracha. And like the Arizal says, the main kedusha of a person comes from Berchus Hanehenen. However, there must be something about the fruits themselves. Fruits of Eretz Yisrael themselves are an embodiment of Kedusha. I want to end off by something that I saw very quickly during the week, 
And I looked at it more extensively this morning in uh, Imre Noyam. Imre Noyam is the Gros commentary on Masech the Brachos. The Gros says something out of this world. It's not on the sheet. I never understood this. There's something called the Shiva Saminim. What are Shiva Saminim? Not what fruits are they, but w- what do they mean? Seven fruits with which Eretz is praised. Oh, what? Oh, wheat? Eretz is praised with wheat. Oh, I didn't know, really, because wheat doesn't grow in America. And barley doesn't grow in America. And pomegranates don't grow in Spain, and they don't grow in Greece. I mean, all this stuff grows everywhere. Grapes. Grapes don't grow in California. Yeah, you think they do. No, they don't. They only grow in as... What does it mean? Shivas haminim shenishtabcha Eretz Yisrael. What does that mean? You ever wonder about that? So I saw quickly, I, I think this morning, that Rabbi Nasha Klein says, yeah, but grapes grow in California, and pomegranates grow in Greece, and wheat grows uh, in, in uh, America, but you never have any country that all seven grow in one place. Yeah, but still, that, 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 mean, that sounds like you're not going to get the best pomegranate in uh, Israel, you know, you might get the best pomegranate from Spain, you might get the best grain from Idaho. The Gra says a different shot. The Gra wants to know, what bracha do you make on vegetables? Boire pre... This you know, right? <laughs> Ha'adama. What bracha do you make on bread? Ha'moitzi lechem min... Ha'aretz. Why by vegetables do you say Ha'adama? And by bread, you say aretz. What's the difference between adama and aretz? Says the Gra, adama means the soil. So vegetables come from the soil. But bread comes from what material? Grain. Chita. Chita grows only by aretz. Aretz means Eretz Yisrael. Say, I have a kasha, your bagel. Gordon, where do you get the bagels from? North Woodmere, I don't think they're going to the Galilee to get grain to make your bagel. So why do we say Hamoitzi Lechem in Ares? Every time we eat a piece of bread, we say Hamoitzi Lechem in Ha Ares. Ha Ares means Eretz Yisrael. Says the Gra, the Shivas Haminim could grow anywhere in the world, but the Shefa of Kedusha and Bracha of the Shivas Haminim come from Eretz Yisrael and then our nishba, all the rest of the world. Like the Gemara says in Tainus, that first Hashem feeds the mistress, and then He feeds the maidservants. First Hashem gives rain to Eretz Yisrael, and then from there He gives rain to all the other lands. That's why the Gros says, I don't understand what this means, we say the same Talumat of Racha in the rainy season, even if we don't need rain. Because we do need rain in Eretz Yisrael, because if it doesn't rain in Eretz Yisrael, then no bracha will come to the produce in Chutzah Aretz. So when it comes to an apple, the apple of California, the orange of Florida, is not nishba from the shefa of Eretz Yisrael. But the wheat, the grain, any of the shiva saminim, wherever they grow, they come from the Aretz, they come from Eretz Yisrael. So when you make a bracha on pas, even if the grain comes from Idaho, it's hamoit lechem min ha'aretz. God brings grain from Eretz Yisrael, and then it sends bracha to the grain everywhere else in the world. So according to this, there might be a certain maila, on Tu Bishvat, let's say, of having shivas haminim, even if they don't come from Eretz Yisrael, but there is some kind of hashba from the fruits of Eretz Yisrael, that the bracha of the Shiva Saminim, why is Eretz Yisrael nishtabeach with these Shiva Saminim? Uh, this I, I never knew. I knew. He says, the habechutz arts nami yesh zayin minim. The krama shabeach Eretz Yisrael. Elam emnesha Shiva Saminim yoinkim me Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael nishtabcha belechem. Kamay shakasa ve'eretz ha'shaloi b'mes genus toicha belechem. V'yalkein anu oimrim v'sein talamat ar b'yimais hagishamim. So, Tu B'Shvat is a Yom Tif because it's a technical day for the laws of Maser. It is a day that the Minhag is to eat fruits. And even though the tour and the rush did not say, V'noicham mi Piria, V'nizva mi Tuva, the Beis Yosef says that we should say V'noicham mi Piria, 
because the focus is on unavarechacha aleha, the focus is on the bracha. As Arizal says, that when a person makes a bracha, they are then ingesting the bracha. And the Iker Kedusha of a person comes from the bracha, especially Peroi Severt Yisrael. The fruits themselves are infused with a certain Shechina. And according to what the Gra is saying, there is a certain connection to Eretz Yisrael that a person could have through the Shivas Haminim. Okay, thanks everybody for coming. Have a wonderful day. We're going to try later. We're going to have a Tu Tish with more amazing thoughts about Tu I wish you all a great day. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com